Hi everyone, this is Ur. I hope you are doing fine. In this video, we will implement login with credentials using Alt.js, the newest version of Next Out. Most people hate it, but we will see if they improve their self or not, and it's easier than Lucia or not. Found it quite easy. Let me know what you think. I have already created my account uh, and log in, and I'm logged in. We are just calling this session function to get the user information. In this tutorial, we will use PostgreSQL and there is a program. I hope you like it. You can find this repo in my GitHub profile. And if you learn something from this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Okay, let's go and code it. I'm on Alt.js official website and I will follow this guide that they tell us how we can install Alt.js. So first we will install next out beta as dependency and we will create a secret key. They have a shortcut for it. I will copy and paste it as well. It will create an env.local in our root folder. For now, I will remove the local part because we will add the result config and it won't be able to grab the local file. It will be able to get the value from env file. Third step is creating an alt.ts file like this, and I will copy and paste it. These parts are very straightforward. Now we will need to create an API route so that all the incoming requests will be resolved into next out and next out will handle it inside. If I paste it like this, it will create folders. Also, it will create the file with the extension. For now, we will paste it here. We won't change this part of the file. As an optional step, we can add a middleware to keep session alive, but it, it will throw an error if we run in a node environment like we do right now. For the sake of example, let's create it so you can see the error we get. I will create middleware TS and paste it like that. This will throw an error in the future, but not now. So let's not forget about the middleware error and keep that in mind. We can go into next steps. Okay, we installed alt.js. We will use PostgreSQL and there is a ORM for this tutorial. And alt.js has a section called database where you can find a database adapters they support. So let's go into the result ORM and we will need to install the dependencies. I will create a new terminal and paste it. You see, we get a conflict. It's most likely due to next out doesn't support the result ORM latest version. So React versions are not compatible with each other. For now, we can say dash dash force to override the error but it, it, it is a responsibility of the maintainers to solve this issue. But for now, we can fix this by using force, which is not ideal again. Anyway, we will need an environment variable that points to our database, but we don't have a database yet. So what I'll do is go to my GitHub profile and especially to repository that we have a Lucy out and scroll down and you will see a script that will spin up PostgreSQL instance in, in a container. I paste this into my terminal. It will create a new container, but I guess I do have a container with this name. I removed it, so let's try it again. Okay, my container is up and you see my database is running. If you have already using some kind of cloud service like Railway or any other PostgreSQL provider, you can directly pass the URL instead of creating a local PostgreSQL container. I will use the container that I have created. That seems nice. Let's go back to the guide. They provide some schemas, but we won't need this part. Instead, let's create our own schema because this schema is for, I think, signing with Google or any, any other social medias. I will create a lib folder inside the root folder of the project. I will create a db. and also schema.ts. And if you take a look at to the example schema.ts, they define the database inside schema.ts. I think that is not a good practice. That's why I have separate them so that we can define our database inside db.ts and define our schema inside schema.ts. For the schema, we will have an users table and we can use pg table. It's just a regular drizzle syntax. 
and I will define my columns here. And for the ID, it doesn't matter too much, but it's a primary key and we define a random UUID. And the important part is having an email like this, and it should be not null. And also we will have a password. An email should be unique as well. That's all for the schema. Let's go back into the DBTS to initialize our database object. We can grab this part from the example they have and paste it. We will need to install Postgres dependency like this. And we have already Drizzle, so let's import it. Beautiful. And this connection string will be come from the, the env file we have created. This one, process.env.drizzle URL. Perfect. And we are exporting our database. OK, let me scroll down. Here we will need to pass our adapter into Nextout so that it will query to our database with using this adapter. So it may be either Prisma or Drizzle. That's how Nextout calls the corresponding functions. Let's go to out TS and about providers, I will import Drizzle adapter like this. And I will also import the DB that we have created. And we can also pass our uh, custom table as a second parameter, but we don't need it right now. And we don't need to migrate as well. Another thing we need to do is create a Drizzle config TS. And it's actually pretty easy. So we can just copy this part. This is the original website of the Drizzle. So I will paste it here and we will use PostgreSQL. So it's true. The schema is located at a lib slash schema. Another thing we will need to do is put our DB credentials like this. And for the URL, we will pass our database URL like this. If you don't put it here, you won't be able to query to our database. Now I should be able to call Drizzle Kit and uh, push. Once I do that, my schemas, which is users, will be applied and created inside my database. How I can check it? I can call MPS Drizzle Kit Studio to see my database. You see, I have a users table with the ID, email, and password columns. So if I go to my app, you will see that we see that Cloudflare error. That is because the middleware TS we have defined. So if we get rid of that, the error will gone. I already told the reason behind it. It's because middleware runs in the edge runtime, but we are in right now not runtime. So everything seems fine. If I go to API sign in, we will see a screen, but empty. It's because we didn't tell next out. We want to log in with credentials. So let's take a look at the GS and find authentication part. You see they have a credentials uh, section. Inside providers, we will need to define a credentials object that we import from next out providers credentials. And that is how next out knows what to do. I will go into out TS and paste it into providers array. I will import this part like this. One thing you will realize is that they do want us to do salting password and getting user from database. For now, let's forget about salting the password and let's directly pass the password. And then we can deal with salting and hashing the password, which is the easiest part. So for this function, I will create a new folder called actions and I will create a new file user actions.ts export const and I will mark this file with use server so that we don't expose anything to the client and our code will run inside server. I will create an async function get user from database and we will get an email and password as parameter. Let's have a try catch. If we throw an error, let's just return success false and message error dot message like this and make this any for now. And inside this try catch block, we will need to find if this email exists in our database or not. So I will import database from lib slash db and I will use query, but you will realize that we don't have auto completion for the result. It's because in the file that we initialize our database, 
Drizzle don't know about our schema. What we can do is that if I hover on a Drizzle object like this, you will see it takes an config object, optional, but uh, we can pass our schema like this. And what we can do is we can import all our schemas as schema from the file where we define our schema. So this syntax means that import all the things inside schema. In our example, it's just the users variable as schema. And we are just passing into the, the result object. So if I go back to my user actions, we will have now auto completion. Great. Find first, I will have where clause and we will need to use equal function from Drizzle and we will import users table to reference the email and this will return the user if it's existed or not. So if this user is not existed, we can return success false and have some message like this. Otherwise, we will need to check if existed user password is equal to password we are passing or not. We need to hash compare here, but since we won't hash the password just yet, we can just compare the password like this. Otherwise, it means that there is a user and the password is given is true. So we can return the user like this. Perfect. So go back to alt.ts and import this function like this. We have a TypeScript error. What we can do to get rid of this error is that we can say as string and do the same thing for the password as well. Now we have a TypeScript error with this function. It's because this function expects to return a user object and we don't return the user data. We can say user.data as user. We can also have this if user success is not there, throw new error with the message we have and it's done. And now if I check API slash out sign in, you will see we have a form and I can make a query to my database, but we get a server error. So let's check why we get it. And we get user not found error. Beautiful. We can do more error handling, but for now that's enough. So let's go into the homepage. We have this template and I will get rid of it very quickly like this. We have a clean page right now. Alt.js also provides a very, very basic form to just sign in. We can copy it and create components folder. And inside it, we can have sign in form TSX like this, and I can paste it into here. So it, it, it is very basic form. So let me render it. And you see, we have, we have an email and password field, and that's all. And now what I'll do is next out is not dealing with the registration. So it takes over from the signing in and managing the sessions instead of registering the user. So that's why we will need to create a new component for registering the user. I will call it sign in form. And basically I will copy the sign in component and paste it. I will rename this into sign up. And inside this, we can directly call our DB, a call insert users, and the values will be email, password, like this. And this should be get email and get password. Of course, in an ideal scenario, I would create a new function inside user actions and also validate these values, email and password before inserting them into my table. Actually, before inserting this user into my table, we should check if there is a existed user or not. Query users find first badge, and we will use email like this. And this is unknown. We don't know it is it has a value or not. So we can say like this and if email is not exist, we can return something like this. If I pass, I still get the error. So its type is form that entry value, but I can make it string. I will do the same for password. And if password is not exist, we return an error. Okay, we found the existed user. So if it's existed, we will return an error because we don't want to override the current user. So we will say user already exists. If we are here 
That means we have a valid email and valid password so we can register the user. That's all. But again, do not store plain text password. So we need to hash it. So we are exporting this component. I will go into page register and I will render this component inside the page you see here. Right now, if I take a look my drizzles video, I don't have any record. Okay. I will enter a email and a password and there we go we have a button here i will click into it let's actually check the network tab okay and you see we have successfully created our first user so when i try to log in and nothing happens right what we can do is we can actually log the current session importing the out that we have defined and since it's an async operation we need to make this page async and we can then stringify the session just to see it like this it is now right even though i'm entering the correct password here you see it's because we need to give one final uh, configuration to out.ts which is our secret key this next out object takes a secret like this and it is that secret secret and also another object which is session and we will use jwt strategy is because since we are using credentials sign-in database strategy is not supported you see it can take two type database or jwt but in our case we must use jwt and another this is optional but i will make jwt token valid for 30 days like this and once I do that, you will see, you will see I'm already logged in. So where is it? Application. If I take a look at the application, I have a token and it is not standard JWT token. If we try to put it into decode website, we will get invalid signature. It's because it's not a standard JWT. It's an encrypted key, which they need to have our secret key to decrypt it, if that makes sense. I'm logged in. It's beautiful. I took a break from the, from YouTube, but I'm planning to go back. Uh, let me know what you think about RGS, if it's easy to set up when compared to Lucia. Just let me know what you think. See you in the next videos. Take care. Bye bye.